I'm Drew Stevenson. This is for my professional responsibility class. Here I'm going to be talking about Model Rule 1.8K, which is about imputation of conflicts of interest. Basically, if one lawyer in a firm has a conflict of interest, most of the time all the lawyers we're going to, are going to be deemed as having that conflict of interest. And this could be true for purposes of disciplinary actions or malpractice actions or in theory, for disqualification of the firm uh, from representing someone. So having said that, let's dive in. 1.8K begins, while lawyers are associated in a firm, a prohibition in the foregoing paragraphs A through I that applies to any one of them shall apply to all of them. So the comments clarify this, comment 23 to rule 1.8. Under paragraph K, a prohib prohibition on conduct by an individual lawyer in paragraphs A through I, so that's 1.8A all the way through 1.8I, also applies to all the lawyers associated in a firm with the personally prohibited lawyer. So, and then it gives an easy, straightforward example. One lawyer in a firm may not enter into a business transaction with a client of another member of the firm without complying with all of those notice and writing requirements of paragraph A. In other words, by paragraph A, we mean 1.8A, which deals with business transactions with the clients. And that's true even if the first lawyer is not personally involved in the representation of the client. In other words, if you have lawyer A is handling a legal matter for a client, and another lawyer in the firm wants to sell the client a house or buy a house from the client, that counts as a business transaction with a client, even though lawyer B, who's buying the house, isn't handling the matter, and the lawyer handling the matter isn't doing this. The imputation is imputed to the whole, or, I'm sorry, the conflict is imputed to the whole firm. This is going to apply to all of the prohibitions under the different subsections of 1.8. So, in other words, if one, if a lawyer in your firm is representing someone, you are also not allowed to use or misuse that client's information. This applies to gifts from clients, um, taking literary rights in the client's case, gifts to clients, waivers of malpractice liability, or um, acquiring a stake somehow in the litigation or an ownership interest in the subject matter of the litigation. So all of those prohibitions in a um, 1.8 A through I would apply to all the lawyers in the firm, even if they're not involved in the client's matter. Now, notice uh, there's one section that was uh, um, omitted here. The prohibition set forth in paragraph um, J, which is basically says no sex with clients, is personal is not applied to associated lawyers in the firm. In other words, um, they, there is no rule against lawyers sleeping with each other's clients in the same firm, but all the other subsections of 1.8 do apply to all the lawyers in the firm. I just want to clarify something so that this is clear in your mind. This is a confusing subject, and you need to understand it for purposes of my exam and the MPRE. Separate imputation rules apply to different types of conflicts of interest. Rule 1.10, which in my course we haven't gotten to yet, uh, covers imputation and the workaround for that, which is going to be called screening for conflicts under Rule 1.7, which is cl conflicts between current clients, and 1.9, which applies to former clients. So if it's a conflict under 1.7 or 1.9, then the imputation rules of 1.10 uh, are what apply. But 1.8K applies only to the special conflicts in 1.8 um, sections A through I, which are all different types of a lawyer's personal conflicts of interest. Notice that there's no workaround or screening for conflicts um, on the, under these sections of 1.8. So it's not good enough that we're screening the lawyer doing the business transaction uh, with a client from the matter. So screening will not apply to the conflicts under 1.8, but it will apply when we get to 1.10 and talk about conflicts arising under the other conflicts rules. Here's a quick review question to see if you've been paying attention. 
A client and her attorney become close as they're working on the client's divorce case. The client offers to sell a parcel of real estate to another lawyer in the attorney's firm. Would the other attorney who is not representing the client need to follow the disclosure rule requirements of Rule 1.8a, yes or no? Hopefully you know the answer to that. If not, you might have tuned out for a minute and should probably rewatch this video. And that concludes our lecture about 1.8k.